Welcome one and all to Synergy. My name is Deep Space Matt, and today, life after the apocalypse is a dangerous one. To not only keep my current citizens alive, but attract new ones, I'll need to provide shelter, treat the toxic water into something drinkable, and research the strange flora to find out which ones are safe. But my people's demands go beyond basic survival, and if I want a bustling city, I'll have to satisfy their cultural needs as well. Can I thrive in a harsh landscape? Let's find out in Synergy. All right, here we go with Synergy. This is a new post-apocalyptic city builder that has just an amazing art style, heavily inspired by comic books, especially those of artist Jean Giraud, also known as Mobius. And judging from the main menu here and from the trailers, they've done an absolute bang up job with the visuals. Now this game just released into early access today, May 21st, and if you want to check it on out, I'll have a link in the description down below where you can do just that. But for now, let's get right into it with a new game. Scorched Earth. The tutorial is essential for familiarizing yourself with the game's mechanics and ensuring you have a rewarding gaming experience and a good understanding of your objectives. The Anchoring. An organization of researchers and philosophers called The Anchoring has decided to reconnect isolated populations, help them acquire knowledge, fight environmental hazards, and understand inexplicable phenomena. And Free Mode. In the sandbox mode, you can replay campaign maps or use unique new ones. Since there is no storyline to follow along, you can just play as you like. That sounds all very nice. We're going to go with the tutorial here. A group of exiles who were driven out of the dried out oasis that had protected them until then needs to recover despite their meager resources. However, the climate challenges them at every turn and the desert is full of strange and dangerous mysteries. The score is only saved if the objective is reached in 40 cycles or less and it looks like we just need to gain a victory to get a bronze. Oh, the art is very good. It looks like a comic book. For two generations, our community lived in an oasis protected from the hazards of the outside world. But like everywhere else, we were driven out of our homes. All is not lost. After crossing a sea of sand, we reached the shores of some new lakes. No matter how toxic their water is, it will be pure bliss to us if we can treat it. Your citizens need clean water to survive. To get it, you need to build a pontoon so your citizens can draw toxic water from a lake with special tanks. Toxic water must then be treated and purified in a purification basin to become clean water that your citizens can drink. All collected resources must be stored. In the water tower, clean or toxic water. In the cellar, food and clean water, which are the resources used by citizens to nourish themselves. And in the small warehouse, all other resources. Citizens don't collect resources if they have nowhere to store them. Move the camera to the watering hole. Right click, we can zoom in and out. Oh, or out. So that's as far as we can zoom in. Can I WSD? I can WSD. Let's build a pontoon, a purification basin, and a water tower. Open the construction menu. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, let's take a look at our resources, though. What do we have? Oh, wait. Are we paused? Is there a timer? I don't see any timers. Okay, so what do we got? Basic foodstuffs, cooked meals, water... Remedies, refined products, tools, technological artifacts, plant resources, natural ingredients, fungal resources, seeds, waste, raw materials, composite matter. There's a whole lot. We currently have no culture. We have no prosperity. Nobody's working, but everybody's healthy. We have 10 people and no housing. Okay, so what does this use? Those two things. What is that? Bark and tree trunks. Uh, okay, it's got to be sticking out here. Where do we like this? Shift to flip the building. Oh, very nice. Okay, let's put it, say, right about here. And we need a purification basin. We can place that. Place it right here. Uh, place it right there. And then a water tower. Oh, it's got an area of effect. We only want this one. We're going to put one... We'll put one down here to store toxic water if we need it. And this one will be only for the purified water. So we'll stick that... 
Stick that here. Oh, here we go. You can speed up time if you want to. And space to pause, F2. Speed up, F1 to slow down. Is there like a F3? No. So we can't go slower. It just goes to pause. So we can go times one, two, and four. It'd be kind of nice, I think, if... Oh, there we go. Pontoon is done. It'd be kind of nice if instead of going up to... We just had the... We just had them all listed out here. And they were like F1, F2, and F3. So space would pause... F1 would be times 1, F2 would be times 2, and F3 would be times 4. Alright, and then we got an exclamation point. No worker assigned. Let's assign all our workers. Water tower. Do I need a worker for the water tower? Does not look like it. We can store 20. I wonder if that's 20 for each. Oh no, this is wished for how much we have in storage. Total capacity is 800. Okay, we can store a whole bunch in here. Oh, I should have put this down here then. I was thinking we might need a water tower separate for clean and toxic water. Can it store both of them at the same time? It looks like it can. Assign a citizen to the purification basin. Well, there we go. We now own infrastructure to treat water as well as a healthy and sustainable irrigation system. However, seasons come and go, hectic and harsh, and we risk a disaster if we don't collect enough supplies for immediate consumption. To keep our buildings running smoothly, we must store enough clean water to prepare for a drought. Getting clean water is essential for the city's survival and development. The scarcity of water means the growing needs of the population need to be balanced with supply means and climatic conditions. Certain climatic events, such as the dry season, can be fatal for unprepared cities as water supply means are slowed down or even stopped. Fortunately, you can check out upcoming weather conditions in the interface, which shows the weather forecast for current and future cycles. A cycle is a period of four days. All this information is displayed near the speed controls. Okay, so we're on day 9 out of 40 of cycle 1. And it looks like, oh, the next the next three cycles are all temperate. That sounds amazing. We need two purification basins. And then collect 20 clean water. I feel like we should just over-prepare, especially in these survival city builders. I'm all about over-preparation and hoarding as many materials as I can. Can I just build another one? Let's just build another one. Right next to it. And man, can I move this? <laughs> can I move this now? Prioritize. Destroy. Oh, I can't move it. Max? No. Okay. Uh, do I get stuff back? Let's find out. Tested for destruction. Hold on. Pause. What does it take? Five and five. Well, it doesn't take much. Let's see if we get these resources back after it's destroyed. It's a good test. Uh, we do not. We do not. Oh, no, there they are. Is it five? Oh, it's five and five. Okay, excellent. We get 100% resources back. All right, I want this uh, probably over here to reach both of them or all four. There we go. And do we have... Oh, we do. Paths. Rough gravel paths, which are less tiring and more stable than sand tracks. Moving speed on tracks and roads, plus 50%. Citizens favor tracks and roads when moving. Okay. So, that's kind of why I spaced them out here, so we can, like, probably put some... Some roads in between here. Some paths. And then where is everybody heading to? Where are we going? Ooh, look at these. Diluvian bush. Oh, here's our starting stock. All right. There we go. We're going to assign... Every, maybe not everybody. Let's go down to three. So that's six people here out of our ten. And then we'll have one here and one here. And two people left over for construction. Uh, speed up. So 
I hit pause, does it go back to speed one? Yeah, I'd love the ability to just go straight back to speed one with a single button press instead of two. All right, and now we're just waiting for them to get water. Oh, look at them working there. Can I? Oh, <laughs> this is as close as you can zoom in. I instinctually, because the art looks so great, I keep trying to zoom in, but this is as close as you can get. And I'm guessing it probably has to do with the art style and the hand-drawn nature. Okay, but we're working, we're working on this. It takes seven days. Oh, we're already on day 16. Oh, these days move fast. And it's going to make 20. Sounds excellent. Your citizens drink 33 units of clean water per cycle. Okay. But every seven days, we're making like 40 here. Because we got two of these going. And how, how fast do these guys work? 1.3 days, 75% efficiency. That's fine, until we learn how to get more people. Mobility, storage and distribution, resource production, or just everything. Oh, and they got shortcuts. Can I use these? Oh, that's excellent. Uh, oh, I should be speeding up, shouldn't I? There we go. The Oasis's inhabitants have slept for too long under the stars. With only an expanse of canvas to protect them from the extremes of the climate, we need to provide shelter in sustainable buildings. For that, we'll need materials as well as a warehouse to store them. Heaps of rock that can potentially meet our needs can be found all around the area. Let's use them wisely. Building requires resources, which can be obtained in various ways. The simplest method is to collect them directly from the map to get the necessary ingredients. The rip out action is available in the fast actions panel. It allows you to collect your resources and plants from the map. The rip out action. Also think about building a small warehouse to store these resources. Use this method to collect rock from rocky amalgams. Start by finding and collecting rocky amalgams on the map. Okay, uh, the rip out. Oh, what? Oh, very cool. Are these rocky amalgams? Hold on, get out of here. No, these are riverbank fingers. Uh, oh, this way. There they are, okay. Grab a bunch of these. Can I, oh, I can select an area. That is excellent. I do kind of wish when I was in this mode, rip out mode, I also got the tooltip of what these things are instead of having to go back out of it. Collect 30 boreal rocks. So we only got two people to do that. Maybe I should go down even. So we have more people to collect. Now we got four people uh, who can be out and about and doing stuff. Oh, build a small warehouse. Well, let's, if I place this directly on these materials, does it kill them? Let's rotate it like this. Looks like it does not. And then do these people, they keep working what they're doing. But I can set them to priority. Oh, what is this? Oh, we have seeds down here. Oh, because they had nowhere to store them. So they broke apart these riverbank fingers and couldn't do anything about it. Still good on storage. Yeah, we can store both of them. I'm guessing they have different uh, basins or some kind of separator. All 
Alright, I love the little building animations. Uh, oh, speed up. I'm <laughs> sitting here watching them. But I probably should be setting them to collect more things. Can I collect these things? And this. What does all this give me? Well, it looks like the bushes grow. I might not want to destroy all of them. Until we get to that part of the tutorial. Oh, there we go. Citizens need a roof over their heads to protect themselves against rough weather and live in decent conditions. Your citizens will go to their homes regularly to nourish themselves, eat, drink, and sleep, which makes the positioning of houses quite strategic. When they nourish themselves, citizens consume food and clean water. These resources are directly drawn from a nearby cellar. This is why houses must be positioned within the range of a cellar. All right, fair enough. To nourish themselves, citizens also need cellars to get clean water and food. Therefore, all storage automatically requires 20 units of each accepted resource type so citizens can bring these in. In the storage interface, it is possible to change the number of required resources or even refuse a resource. This can help in determining where resources are stored or preventing citizens from consuming certain foodstuffs. Since all resources must be carried by citizens from one structure to another, it is important to have enough citizens that are not assigned to any building and are therefore available as carriers. Citizens naturally prioritize your direct orders and then the tasks they consider most important. However, you may make an order or building a priority. For instance, your citizens will give priority to bringing and collecting resources from a building marked as a priority. All right. So 2,000 storage capacity. We need to build a cellar and then figure out where we want our houses. So this also has a range. You know what? We're just going to put it uh, right here, right next door. And get our... Oh, we have different houses. What are the difference between these? They make different, or they take different resources. Capacity four, three to six days, one to two citizens, three by three. Four, three to six days, one to two citizens, three by three. Okay, they just require different resources. That's very neat. You can, uh, depending on what you have. How many do we, three houses? Let's build one of each. What are these? Three by threes. So we're just going to go. Just directly across. Let's grab the next one. And let's get some paths going everywhere. And speed up time. Uh, where's our... Don't we have four people? Or are there two? Oh, there's two on here. It only displays one person in the animation. Seller is complete. This needs water and food. Interesting. Well-being, social, culture, knowledge. Everybody is working. Oh, they all have names. Can I click on any of these? Oh. Oh, look at that. That is really cool. Is that the... Oh, is that the different people? Wait a minute. Go back. Oh, I think, yeah, I think it's showing me where everybody works at or where everybody is. That's neat. All right, uh, speed up time.
The food we brought with us is dwindling by the day, but picking the strange and prickly fruit growing in the area, not to mention eating it, is risky. Oh, I already kind of picked some of that. Before anything else, we must eliminate any danger related to the exploitation of these plants. Although we do not have a lot of scientific knowledge, the Oasis's old distiller is able to perform basic chemical experiments. Equipping it with a mobile working station, we could start our botanical studies. Four adults and zero kids joined the city. Oh, what? We have 14 now? Oh, look at that. Performing environmental analyses with the field laboratory enables you to discover characteristics of nearby plants. Understanding the environment is the only way to get resources without causing your citizens to suffer or destroying the environment. Oops. The first analysis, the surface analysis, gives you the result of the rip out action and of harvesting actions on plants. Surface analyses only provide information on harvesting actions that are already unlocked. After unlocking a new harvesting action, you need to perform a new surface analysis. To be able to be available to citizens, harvesting actions require a harvest building. When a harvesting action is performed on a plant, the latter changes its growing state instead of being destroyed. Oh, I'm pretty sure I just destroyed those. This action is therefore more sustainable. Also, since the action doesn't destroy the plant, the latter sticks to the harvesting order. Therefore, citizens will interact with the plant each time it reaches the appropriate state of growth. Oh, so they'll just keep going. That sounds great. Okay, so ripping out <laughs> is bad. Which is what I've been doing. Stone house. Let's clear that. They need food. Uh, yeah, we ripped out that tree. And this bush right here. This one grew. Okay, field laboratory. Let's come over here. Let's pause it real quick. Area of effect. So we want to kind of place this... I guess where there's a bunch of stuff to... Can it only analyze stuff within it, its range? We got the trees here. We got the bushes. What is this? Ruins? Can we analyze that? Uh, let's put this... Let's kind of line it up. I gotta have all this stuff lined up. Is that lined up? One, two, three. Three, three. Let's put it right here. One more down. Uh, build one picker's cabin. Housing, storage, flora. And I probably want this. Oh, yeah. Look at all these bushes. Oh. Oh, this has got a giant range. I can't even see the extent. Or is it just everywhere? It seems like it's just everywhere. Uh, well, you can be... Maybe... We want you over here, actually, closer to where you're going to store it, or closer to where you're going to pick the berries. All right, uh, speed up time. These paths don't cost anything, right? They don't. Oh, it's right in that tree. It's awful. Will they destroy that? Oh, you just can't even do it. All right, assign two. Beginning of a new cycle, another temperate season. Cycle five is also temperate. Uh, and we, oh, we need another house, don't we? Let's make just another row here. Uh, can we rotate it backwards? No. I don't think it matters. Like, I don't think we need the entrance to be next to a road. But it just kind of looks nice. So, we'll give a little space here. And assign, assign three here. How do we see how many people are working? And how many are not? There we go. 13 to 1. Not great. We're going to go down one here. And then add an analysis. Surface analysis. 
and analyze that. And let's see if we can queue things up. Analyze. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah. No, we're good. We're good. Can we analyze this? We cannot. It's only plants. Interesting. So you grab it and you bring it back. The seat of analysis reports. By ripping out diluvian bushes, we can collect their branches. The watery pods that this plant produces renew themselves after some time. It is thus possible to pick them without killing the specimen. Diluvian bush branches grow very quickly so they can be trimmed regularly. That is excellent. To get this information, analyze a plant in a place where its temperate needs are met at 67% or more. Humidity needs, or its requirement of organic matter, minerals. Oh, how can we tell that? Can I click on this? Is this 67% uh, of things? Can I analyze it again? Oh, and we need to harvest. Hey. We want you to pick here, and presumably these as well, and these. All right, everybody is housed. They're grabbing some pods. Felling this huge tree trunk allows you to cut its trunk and use its bark. So still only rip out. And then do we do anything new with this? No. Because we need, I think, more than a surface analysis. All right, how are we doing on water? 290, we're doing great on water. And we just needed to collect 20 of these pods. We have three, okay, speed up time. Oh wait, I should, oh, there we go, we got it. To obtain certain resources, a refining stage might be necessary. For example, tools crafted at the forge or dishes consumed by citizens prepared in the kitchen. Wait, they're consuming dishes? Y'all, you just gotta wash them. Although, I guess with water being so scarce, it's only for drinking, not for washing. So disposable plates is probably what they want to go with. Certain versatile production buildings can produce several resources. Production mo- oh yeah, look here, these dishes. Uh, production modules allow you to select the resource to produce and the way to produce it by choosing the recipe to use. This allows you to adapt to the resources available in your environment. A building's production speed depends on its efficiency, which is mainly influenced by its number of active citizens. Recipes can be affected by bonuses or penalties that impact efficiency, cost and resources, and yield. These may come from several sources, bonuses unlocked through research, bonuses due to proximity with other buildings, and bad weather penalties. Uh, we gotta slow this down. There's a lot going on with this tutorial here. Build a kitchen, build a forge, resource production. Alright, let's, uh, you're a big one. Stick this over here. And stick our forge on the opposite side. And probably get some paths going like this and coming up this let's rip let's rip this out can I prioritize this oh I can
And then I guess I don't need all of you here. Unless there's something else. Are those the same? Are these the same trees as these? Oh, maybe not. Oh, wait, you can analyze stuff outside of this area. Oh, I thought this is the area where you had to analyze stuff. You can go anywhere. Grab this. Uh, grab this. And where were those? Oh, you can't analyze these. Or maybe you can, it's just not close enough. Oh, whatever that is. Are we at the edge of the map? Okay, we're at the edge of the map there. Already got those. I think that's everything. Kitchen complete. We have only two available citizens. Oh, we need more people. Ripping out this shrub will allow us to collect its edible vegetables as well as some plant waste for compo composting. This plant renews its production of vegetables every life cycle. By picking them, it's also possible to collect some plant waste, which is rich in organic matter. This plant allows for a more precise harvesting and will just pick its vegetables. So can we add some of these guys to it too? Cabbage shrub. And we want to do this. Select some items. Uh, oh wait. Unselect some items. Go down here. And then we're going to add three of these. I don't know how many we should be adding. Should I just be adding a whole bunch? Just like add everything? I don't know how efficient they are for three people. We got here, ripping out this plant by the roots provokes its toxins to dry out. It is then possible to extract its seeds safely. Trimming riverbank fingers even partially it makes them lose all their fluids and kills them. Okay. So these things are toxic. But we'll get seeds. Maybe we need to we need to research more, presumably. To figure out if there's a use for that. Okay. At least one person in the kitchen. We want two people there. Let's just go down to one person here. And the forge is almost ready. We're making simple dishes. We're gonna put one person here. What is this? A cinder sprout. Too delicate to have many uses, but all the bark can be collected and used as building material. Renew their epidermis after some time, which makes it possible to sustainably collect their bark. Produce bitter-tasting, ashy kernels, which have numerous medical uses. These can be collected by trimming the shrub. So I'm guessing we need multiple picker's cabins if we want to do different actions. So right now they're just picking. And if we want to trim stuff, we would have to make another cabin. Oh no. When a citizen interacts with certain plants, they may get a wound. Performing analyses on plants is essential to identify dangerous interactions. In cases of wounds, the patient needs to be taken to the infirmary. Although wounds are not lethal, they reduce moving and working speeds. Beware though, getting a wound a second time makes it progress into exsanguination, which quickly leads to the patient's death. Okay. Uh, I mean, not okay. Are you giving me the ability to, to build an infirmary? No, not quite yet. Maybe not until we're done with this. Uh, somebody's wounded. Click to see affected citizens. Clematoff. Hey, Clematoff. My health condition is worrying. Yeah, okay. Am I able to, like, stop you from working here? Oh, look at you. Oh, look at the art design here. That looks great. Does everybody look the same? Can I select other people? From here. 
They all got the same fashion sense. Oh, no, they don't. There are differences. All right, like, I want Klemetov to not be working here. How do I specifically deselect you? I guess I just got to do that. But if I do this, who is this? Zareth. Okay, good. All right, Klemetov, you are just going to be a free worker. And not be out there picking plants. Actually, can I like, if I assign you, can I assign specific citizens? I don't know if I can assign specific citizens or deselect. Like if I wanted Giala here, I don't think there's a way to get rid of you. I'd have to unselect everybody. Can I like take this out? No, that just leads me to the kitchen. Yeah, it'd be nice if I can select specific people to work in specific places. But you are... No, don't go to the picker's cabin. Oh, you're just... You're a carrier now. That is excellent. Oh, no. While collecting whipping gourd. Wait, I selected whipping gourds? What is the whipping gourd? Did I research this? I did not. Oh, I thought I selected one of these. Okay, we need to... Oh, no, you are... You are researching it. It's just taking a long time because I... Taking longer because uh, I took somebody out of here. Does this show me how long it's taking? It doesn't. There you are, Vastu. Yeah, you were going... I think the Whipping Gourd I selected was out here somewhere. Okay, I can't have I can't have people dying. Yeah, see, if I just go like this, I have to deselect all of them, and then just hope that. Oh wait, no, I had no workers. You're gonna come right back. Get out of there. <laughs> uh, and if I take everybody out, are you still picking? You still selected on what I had selected? Yes. It doesn't matter if uh, there's nobody in here. Which is nice. Um, we need... We don't have materials, though. We need branches. Okay. Let's... Build... Another picker's cabin. Because branches come from... Man, now I don't remember. The diluvian bushes. But we're only picking them. We need to be trimming them. So, let's build another cabin here. And we'll set them to trim. How are we doing on water? We're doing okay. I think I want to leave that as is. Two people in the kitchen trying to get up to 40 simple dishes. Oh, what am I talking about? Dishes? <laughs> when I thought dishes, I thought I thought they meant plates. Like I thought it's not. It's like a it's a, a meal. They're making 40 simple meals. Which makes a lot more sense now. We still have a bunch of starting stock. Oh, cooling bombs. But you're moving everything over, which is excellent. Do we have space for all this? Oh, yeah, look at that. 2,000. These things hold quite a bit. Uh, speed up time here. We'll get this built. I mean, well, we're going to have to risk it. We just don't have enough workers. Actually, I, we're not researching anything. Take everybody out of there. All right, now if I come here, I add everybody here. One of them's sick, which is not great, but we go and trim. Can I trim the same that we're, the same bushes that we're also picking from the other cabin? It looks like it. 
All right, I just want the branches right now. I don't need whatever this is. What are these? Uh, trimming. Oh, gives vegetables. Okay. No, we're good. Okay, please don't die while you're trimming. I just need enough to make some tools. Oh, wait, can I... Get rid of you. Stick you... Can I... Come on, work in the kitchen, maybe. There you go. It's very possible I'm missing how to specifically select a particular person to work somewhere. If I click on this, it just takes me there. Needs, health. Oh, man. Everybody's getting wounded. This is not great. Well, I, we just got to hope luck is on our side. Nobody's working it here, which is fine, right? We don't need them here. All resources are recovered once destroyed. It does modify within range. Plus five to, to something. Plus five to crystal balls. I can't, I can't move over. There's no... There's no seeing what the tooltip means. And then, can I do something with this? Collect resources from these ruins as well as technological artifacts using the ripout action. Okay. Although, I don't think I have any. Everybody's working, so I have nobody to do that at the moment. Which is fine, because we're just looking for some of this. Speed up time. Dishes are going okay. They've got nothing. They have no resources. But they should. They should be trimming. Have we not gotten anything by now? Or maybe because the other one, maybe you can't trim at the same time. Okay, let's just, you know what, take you out of here. Oh, what is this? A dry season. Oh, no. Why is everybody not working? We have nowhere to store it. We have storage space. What is going on here? Efficiency is zero. The production inventory is full. Oh, down here. Oh, because we have no carriers. So they can hold 50 in the pontoon. Oh, we really do need people not set to work. So they could just... So nobody will take it to the water tower. The workers here, <laughs> they're not going to carry their own stuff uh, over here to the water tower. I mean, that extra, that extra 15 feet, way too much for them. There you go. Now they're working. All right. And now we also, we don't have vegetables. Oh gosh. Okay. We turn this off, but now I think we need to wait for these things to grow. And actually, what if we just, you know what? Remove everything. And you guys can trim these ones over here. And then I'm going to select this cabin to not pick these ones. Or were they not? Maybe I already had them not picking them. Ooh, unselect all items. All right, you're going to grab that. Oh, please don't get wounded. Maybe there's a mistake. Can you get wounded doing this? 
All right, there we go. Oh, wait, what do we got? This is not the resources I need. There it is, the branches. Okay, we got the simple dishes. We analyzed, analyzed the whipping gourd. Piercing their membrane allows us to collect their clean water, although the latter tastes like an overripe vegetable. Best not to pick this plant's lianas. Oh no, they lash out hard at anyone that attempts it and can wound them. Once the plant's lianas wither, they stop being harmful and can be trimmed. Okay, well, that is good to know. Okay, let's go here. Oh, there's nobody here, so it lost all of it. Which is just fine. Or actually, maybe, did I select unselect all items? I might have done that. So we don't want to pick the whipping gourds, which is what was going on. Why everybody got wounded. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's got a wound on it. Oh, that's excellent. Now that I've researched it, it knows. We do need all these vegetables here, though. Uh, grab these. All right. Uh, of course, we have nobody working here because we need one person here. Let's drop somebody off of this. Put you back there. And now we are finally forging. It's going to take five days. To make, how many do you make? Okay, you make 10. Excellent, that's what we need. Uh, speed up time. I like the animations on the buildings too. I wonder if this gets filled up the more it goes. I didn't notice what it looked like prior. Oh, we have nobody to be a carrier. Uh, we'll put one person each. Seems too little, but at least we can get things, we get production back going. And then what is this? Prioritize and destroy buildings. All right, there we go. Civil engineering, we have enough to survive at least for now. Still, mere survival won't keep the citizens motivated, and many are already moaning, what now? Why toil and work every day just to get a ration of food and a sip of water? I mean, you don't die. You know, <laughs> it's a big desert with toxic water. To keep the population motivated and allow the community to live again, it's high time to think of this camp as a real city. We must plan and build common living spaces dedicated to sociability and leisure. And we got four more adults. You now know how to provide your citizens with food and clean water. Their basic needs are therefore activated. With no food or clean water, they might suffer from malnutrition or dehydration. If this persists, they may develop a weakening sickness or even die of hunger or thirst. When a citizen is suffering, their moving and working speeds are reduced. Sickness can be treated at the infirmary. If the citizen is infected with the same sickness a second time, it progresses into something more serious that requires urgent treatment to avoid the patient's death. Citizens can pass away in various manners, starvation, thirst, serious untreated sicknesses, lost or missing during an unfortunate expedition. Ooh, we can send people out on expeditions. Once you have guaranteed your citizens' survival, it is time to conceive a city with architecture that makes sense and that is pleasant to live in. Building a square allows you to start forming a district. There are several squares and various district types per square, each having its own specifics. Cultural space, market square, a botanic square. Buildings belong to the district of the nearest square. To be valid, each district needs a specific building. Other mentioned buildings add to the district's points. Oh, this is very cool. I can imagine having a giant city with different districts set out. And there's a nice free play sandbox mode to play around with. Okay, we need to build a cultural square to make a social district. Oh, and we have an infirmary. Okay, wait, pause real quick. We need this going. We'll stick an infirmary. Uh, right over 
here. And then, what do we got? We got well-being. Ooh, sun awning. Modifies within range. Again, I wish I knew what that symbol was. It's giving plus three something. Is that decoration? Canteen, bench, table. Oh, here, this is knowledge. So this here is giving us plus three knowledge. Oh, I got it now. So that will give a well-being. All right, where is... Our cultural square, there it is. Social space for urban meetings and relaxing moments. Oh, I got no, I don't have enough space here. We're going to put it uh, over here. Does it have an area of effect? It affects everywhere. Reach a district score of 200. Okay, we did get more people as well, which is excellent. You probably want to increase this. And probably this as well. Two on the forge. All right, and we're looking good. Where is tools? There we go. Essential for the most in essential in the most advanced tasks. I wonder how do I get that back? Diary. Notifications. Quest log. There it is. Oh, we need housing. I, w <laughs> I was completely ignoring that. People kind of need to live. They gotta live somewhere. So these house... Four. So that's eight. We need two more. Do I have enough space here? I don't. Can we rip out this thing? No, we can't. All right, uh, let's go maybe just on the other side here. We're going to mirror it. Oh, no, wait a minute. Was I looking at this wrong? Oh, we have 16 housing capacity. We didn't need all these extra houses. I thought, I thought that red 16 meant we had 16 homeless. That is not correct. We have 18 people, and we have housing for 16. So we can get uh, we can get rid of this. Don't need that. We technically don't need this one. I'm going to keep it anyway, because we're probably going to get more people. Okay, infirmary is complete. The infirmary provides complete treatment for all the sicknesses that citizens can suffer from. However, treatment duration and remedy quantities may vary. When a citizen is being treated, they can perform no other tasks. Ideally, it's always better to keep your citizens away from harm. The infirmary allows you to select what sickness to treat. Assigning several doctors allows you to simultaneously heal a greater number of citizens. Some cures require remedies. To produce the latter, you must build a pharmaceutical factory. Okay, we're going to put uh, a couple people in here. We got the cultural square. Complete a social district. We need a hall of wisdom and six stone houses. Okay, never mind. I should have I should have kept those building. Or no, these two will complete it. Oh no, wait, we need to make a social district. This is for historical. Oh, interesting. We need a canteen. We can build that. And we have the number of houses needed. And is this also stuff down here we need? Or this is st just stuff in the area that is affecting its score. So because it's smelly with the riverbank fingers and the cabbage shrubs, it's getting minus 10. 
minus 50 because there's a forge nearby. All right. Uh, what is this symbol? We need poultices. Oh, gosh. Well, we have we have 100 poultices. Do we not have runners? We don't have runners. Of course. Um, where do I take people from? Forge. I feel like making food is kind of important. Making water is... Everything's important <laughs> around here. Uh, but we definitely need to take people off of things. Can I do this? Can you go get healed, please? Oh, wait. Now I have five. Did I take that many off? It didn't feel like I took that many. All right. So, oh, good. They're being healed. And I'm guessing that six there is uh, perhaps a number of days. So six days. Uh, we need a canteen, though. Where was that? Was that well-being or was that social? And we're going to place that. Does this have an area of effect? It does. So we want these near the houses. Oh, it doesn't line up with the with the uh, <laughs> with the square that's awful all right this needs vegetables oh because we're no longer I have you here but I have you literally picking probably nothing oh no I have you picking a bunch of stuff but I have picking I probably have you picking way too many things. There's only one to use. Oh no, everybody's work everybody's working other tasks. Position none. Kitchen none. All right, we have enough housing for everybody now, plus a little extra for whenever we get, whenever we get some more. And this is slowly getting built. We need these people to get healed. There we go. Excellent. Everybody's healthy. We're just going to leave one person here working. And I'll watch this one getting built. Wait, how's our how's our water doing? Everybody's working. I got to keep double checking. I have I have runners. Uh, don't have branches. Don't have vegetables. But presumably, this is all full. So I just need runners to. I could prioritize this, and the runners will prioritize that. And okay, now we have vegetables. Excellent. All right, canteen almost done. Resources, loaves of bread and simple dishes. Oh, we need like a bakery now. We have a score of 80 at the moment. So we have a kitchen. Oh, these will add. We need a tea bar. Oh, the sun awnings. And what about these? Yeah, benches and tables. How big is this? Double. 
Uh, we can put some lovely benches. Oh, we probably want... Wait, let's stick some paths first. Or where, so we can know where everything's going. Then we can stick some decorative stuff elsewhere. Go like this. Just paths everywhere. They're free. All right. And come down here. Sun awning. Oh, yeah, it's nice. How many... If we put multiples... Like, it says zero out of two. Does two sun awnings work, or do we need... One of each. I think you. I think multiple works. So this is out of eight. So you can have a max of eight. So we just make eight benches or eight tables. That should work. Longhouse, turret house... And then a couple of benches here. And maybe tables over here. What else do we got? Does any of this count? A statue. Cubic statue. You guys like statues? Bushes. Lotuses. Irrigation canals. Street lamps, turret house, a bunch of trees. No. Can we even make a tea bar? Uh, does not look like it. Oh, oh, we got it. Housing satisfaction. Your citizens' well-being is closely related to the quality of their housing. Beyond the basic needs, housing quality is assessed according to its access to well-being, social interactions, cultural spaces, and places of knowledge. Certain buildings apply access scores to all cells within their range. For instance, schools apply an access bonus to knowledge around it. In this tutorial, we will focus solely on access to well-being. The well-being score depends on the proximity to vegetation, the presence of water holes, the shadowing surface. Consult the well-being heat map to see the most suitable places. Consult building details in the construction menu to see which have an impact on well-building. Then build these. Build a scent garden. Have a house with a level 10 in well-being. Well we do. Satisfaction. Oh yeah, 11 out of 20. Oh, you're not... Great at well-being. And then we build a scent garden. Relaxing place where particularly pleasant scented plants are grown. Citizens can rest under its central air balloon and enjoy the concentrated aromas. Well, that sounds great. This right over here. And, oh yeah, look at this. Can this go here? Oh no, it's three. A couple small fountains here. Let's put a small fountain with a lovely little bench right in front to enjoy that. I'm probably using all my resources that I shouldn't be using. We still have runners. Okay, good. This. Oh, it's prioritized. Uh, speed up time here. What is this? Oh, I think that was the auto save. I wonder if we see citizens actually using these items. Like relaxing under the sun awning or sitting on a bench. I haven't noticed. Uh, assign four citizens. Oh, jeez. Is that everybody? Waiting for available citizens. Okay. You left to eat. 
There we go. The Call of the Unknown. The citizens have noticed a strange phenomenon, a luminous dot blinking chaotically and only visible at night. They fear it could be a distress signal. Numerous volunteers have asked to investigate it and organize a rescue operation if need be. Let's select some explorers and equip them for the trip. Two systems shape the game's progression by introducing new possibilities, research and exploration. At the start of the game, most buildings are not accessible and must be discovered through research. Research can unlock, also unlock effects for buildings such as bonuses or new tasks. Research is, op is separated into two trees, each with a distinct theme. Technological for tools, extraction and refining, and cultural, social, well-being, and food. Let's see, two research, research completed, unlockable bonuses. Exploring the world provides the opportunity to make important discoveries. In addition to finding resources and welcoming new citizens, explorers can also discover new plants to integrate into their environment, along with precious knowledge that can be found in tablets. However, expeditions are both costly and risky. Citizens sent on an exploration will have to make some difficult and potentially dangerous decisions. Oh, look at this, you can choose. Investing time, resources, benefiting from research. That is very neat. So we need to build a research center, unlock the exploration missions research, build an explorer's hut, and examine the source of the chaotic blinking light. But we're at over an hour, so that's going to do it for this video. This game is great. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I like the visuals, of course, which are absolutely spot on. The game looks gorgeous here. And as far as the gameplay, I'm really liking that too. I like the commitment to the post-apocalyptic theme, where the beginning is all about survival and retreating toxic water. We have to do research on all the various plants. Otherwise, doing the wrong thing with them could be disastrous. And now we're able to send out expeditions to explore the wasteland. And then beyond that, as you grow your city, we have the different types of squares so you can have different districts. It's all a lot of fun. And even for early access, it seems like there's a whole lot of content here. This is just the tutorial. I haven't even gotten through it yet and it feels like a regular story mode, but there is another story mode and then the sandbox mode to play. Once again, this game just released today, May 21st, and if you want to check it on out, I'll have a link in the description down below where you can do just that. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and if you made it this far, thanks for watching.